Welcome back for our final game of the day, which pits Counter Logic Gaming versus Clutch Gaming. Aiden, it's been a fun second to last day of the summer split here of 2018. Yeah, it's the penultimate day for the regular season. We gotta do MVP voting and stuff like that. So playoffs gonna happen, something else going on. Academy well, Awards will finish. All right, let's take a look at the starting rosters. Selecting blue side, it is Counter Logic Gaming. In the top lane, Fallen Bandit. In the jungle, Wiggly. In the mid, Huki. Bot and support, Stick Sam by Frost and Coach Goldman. And facing them on the red side, it's Clutch Gaming. In the top lane, Solo. Jungle is Lyra. Mid, Feathervin. Bot lane, Apollo with support, Hakuho. And Coach McScrag with strategic coach, Baby Zeus. And while Clutch Gaming are locked out of the postseason, every bit of improvement they show on stage will play into the run to the regional qualifiers come in September. Yeah, remember they still have championship points from their fourth place finish in spring, so they can still make Worlds with a gauntlet run, but it's not in their hands. There are scenarios where their 30 championship points doesn't earn them a spot in that gauntlet at all. And yeah, Febivin, I'm, I'm outraged too. But the team seems <laughs> to be improving, given that last week, Clutch gave up early kills versus Golden Guardians, and they still managed to turn around the game and smash. And Clutch will be hoping to flex any improvements over CLG, who are starting both their Academy top and that jungle duo of Fallen Bandit and Wiggly after a strong regular split and a quarterfinal victory over 100 Thieves last night. Yeah, it was a 3-2. to two. It was a long series. That was one where you're probably not getting too much rest before you're getting up playing on the LCS. And as the first year of the franchise era comes, to a close, CLG are making moves like this because they shut the book on their worst season ever as a team. And with the disappointment resulting in no postseason two times in a row, CLG are going to need to play in a way that reminds their fans to keep the faith. And I think, again, this is kind of a, a decent spot to play some of your academy players. And for someone like Wiggly especially, there are players we've started to see play up. You know, even, there are veterans in the academy league as well. So it feels like the talent pool there is getting some pretty good reps in that league. And for someone like Wiggly, who's potentially ready to punch through into the LCS and be a mainstay here, he certainly wants to show himself on the stage and show what he can do, because he has been such a, such a strong jungler in that league. Yeah, who's been your favorite uh, academy pull-up uh, since the start of Split? Lost. Oh, I was going to say uh, Jensen for me. <laughs> <laughs> Started there. I see. Look where he is now. You did there. He's pretty good, as it turns out. <laughs> Glad he got a chance. But <laughs> Wiggly and Fallen Bandit. You know, I think Fallen Bandit actually got a player of the series last night for the quarterfinals as the top laner. Somebody who plays a kind of a mixed style. He can't play aggressive, and he's really good on tanks as well. Uh, when I think of his name, I always think of kind of a Mundo coming to mind. Uh, but he is still very, very good. And Wiggly used to play for Cloud9 Academy. Yes. And then went over in exchange for Blabber. And now seeing him on the stage, see what he's able to do here, because Rainover wasn't performing too well. Darshan also was kind of that top half of the map that wasn't doing too hot. And so this might be a... Kind of a look for CLG in the future if this works out for them. Certainly nice to see teams kind of dipping into their full rosters here with Academy squads behind them, but we'll see what happens here in the draft. We've got Tom Kent, Kindred, and Morgana, the three bands there from CLG. Uh, and Aatrox Nocturne is the two red side standards. Akali still up. Zoe still up. Khan also taken away, so Varus is the first pick here for Stixay. Looks like Brom's going to be stolen there for Hakua. Wants to keep that out of the hands of Biofrost. And starting to see a lot of this. Tom can't ban, but Trundle plus strong support seems to be a very popular red side choice today. Yeah, Tom Kench was banned away, and so was Morgana. So they're just saying, all right, Hakuho, let's go down tier list, get yourself the Brom, see what they'll pick into it here. I don't know what they're cheering, but I'm enjoying the enthusiasm. Graves Mundo, here's a lock-in for CLG. Can he give Wiggly an aggressive jungle and Fallen Bandit that tank, like you mentioned? Yep. When I think of Fallen Bandit, I think of Mundo, even from, I think, a year ago when I saw him uh, for the first time. But, yeah, Wiggly going to be on a very aggressive jungler here. We'll see what he's able to do, because this is a counter matchup to the Trundle. It's one of the best champions you can play into it. And we'll see what he ends up doing with it, because it is his LCS debut on this stage. There's also Ash locked in for Apollo, with a big smile on his face, alongside Forbiven. So I'll move into phase two now of these bands and see what the teams want to be targeting out. Potentially that support position to pinch Biofrost down or even the mid lane. And I would say getting rid of more and more engaged and kind of taking it away from Biofrost, who has been in charge of their engage for a lot of the split would be quite nice. Yep. I'll start away. Azir is the other one taken off 
for Bivens' hand. Feels like regardless of the metagame, for Bivens' Azir has always been a threat. True. Very true. Zoe's still on the board, though. Something that needs to be considered. But it feels like now people are going, wait, Fizz just destroys Zoe. Uh, I don't think we can pick it blind. Zillion also a fan away. Potential support as well, and also mid. Seen a lot of that one crop up, so Dutch Game, we don't want to deal with that possibility. And then last man LeBlanc, so uh. two kind of signature champions from Forbiven being taken away here. Apparently people are cheering for Pantheon. Ah, the diction got better. <laughs> All right, 12 seconds now for Clutch to make this pick. If it is Pantheon, I'm going to have to give somebody in the crowd credit. I think it would be, be GP into the Mundo. It's a classic matchup. Solo's going to play it. They'll pick their top laner here. I'm sorry, guys. Solo's GP also really good. So Yeah, and also you want to save your mid lane for last, because if you pick Zoe here, they'll pick Fizz into it. If you pick Fizz, which I don't know why you would, uh, it would get, things would get pick, pretty awkward from there. Pick something else. Yeah. Also, if, the, the thing is, if who he picks, like Syndra, and he might just go Oriana Ooh, here. baby! Ooh. The Via Daddy Bod. Yeah, you ban, you ban him out enough. He's got to go dig down and be like, oh, no, I got to go play the Bard. What will I do? <laughs> There's a ruse all along. This Fire Frost will take Bard into battle. Would have been good with the Zillion as well. So maybe uh, some foresight from Clutch as the last pick from CLG looks to be required for Hui. Ah, cool. here he is again. Yeah, uh, I think you're pretty, you're pretty free to pick the Zoe into this if you want to. You can play Fizz, but I think he'd go for something like a Syndra or Oriana here into the rise. Maybe maybe Cassio? Yeah, kind of a classic kind of pick is yeah. something else. Like, I mean, Vivian has, like you're saying, apart from the bands and picks, almost every option available to him a here. Kali is up if he wants to style, but. Ah, not gonna, today. Gonna play the Syndra, all right. So, so far, Clutch Gaming, Solo once again on the Gangplank. Every time he gets this, he does decently, and it's really not like a lane where he just gets destroyed. He stays even. He's really good in later team fights. But Fevin, you want to see a little bit more from him in terms of controlling the game from the mid lane here. I think for me, definitely looking at the new blood here, the CLG. Yes. Look at that top side, Fallen Bandit. Uh, a pick that can be impactful, although maybe not so much early. And Wiggly, especially on the aggressive side of the jungle matchup, counter picking here with Graves. Look for him to get a lot of stuff done early on. Yeah. Watching Wiggly, watching Fallen Bandit, and seeing if they can get back into a form where CLG fans will be proud of this team because they've missed two playoffs. They're not going to have any appearance at Worlds. They're locked out. They cannot have a postseason. And CLG, I mean, people talk about them being an organization that you know, used to lose a whole bunch back in the double lift days. Like they never won trophies, but they made all of the playoffs. It was the first time they had ever missed playoffs this uh, this spring, and two in a row, and not going to Worlds or not going to these playoffs, is still a huge kind of blow to the CLG fandom. Yeah, and that's a fandom that runs deep, certainly, throughout the annals of League of Legends history. But we'll see what happens here between Clutch and CLG. Not quite playing for fun, I would say. No. Definitely more playing for pride. Yeah. Well, CLG, they have two new people on the squad. They want to play for the future. And Clutch Gaming, they want to play to get better for the gauntlet. And, I mean, the hard work, unfortunately, for them doesn't stop until they're absolutely eliminated from the gauntlet. So Clutch have a lot ahead of them, potentially, and they'll have to play as though that is the case. For CLG, it's time to maybe show off some of your academy players. Because in that league, they've had a really solid split. Yeah, you want to go? Wiggly's in one of the reasons. Let's see if we can find out why. They are in a Academy semifinals. Mm -hmm. So, 30 seconds. just get more stage Wiggly practice. Score. Get yourself ready for that. And, you know, you may be able to bring home the Academy Worlds banner. <laughs> the coveted. That's Wiggly hand standing in the pixel brush. Looks like no one's doing anything too creative here at level one. Uh, interesting that he went for the fleet footwork. A lot of graves are going for press the attack now because the Auto, E, auto, auto into your combo. It's usually pretty devastating. And of course, we have been on his Syndra. I'll see how he does. Looks like Stixx already proc lethal tempo. So Hakuo ate an E. Stixx has that ability on cooldown. Got a little bit of poke there. Firefrost picking up chimes. It's been a while since we've seen Bud, actually. Yeah. Maybe time to remind the viewers of exactly what Bud does. Runs around, collects chimes, uh, meeps a whole bunch. And then somehow kills you. 
Yeah. Oh, he does a lot of damage with Electrocute. Yeah, Ignite as well. It's funny because, like, Electrocute got uh, nerfed on live, but actually it's a buff for Bard. Because it normally, like, the Electrocute change, it's kind of like a net. If you get two of them off, you're fine, right? But with Bard, he doesn't have to spend mana to proc Electrocute. Basically, it's auto, auto, or Q auto. It's basically the same. And he took Sweeper, so Wiggly's going to get in here. Wiggle his way to the bottom. That was really cute from CLG. And surprise! Yeah, here we go. They're going for it. Apollo going to get slid up with a red buff already. Good exhaust from Hakuo. Now Lyra's coming and down. And second surprise. 1v1. I think Wiggly might be OK here. Biofrost behind him. Wiggly going to keep fighting. Hakuo is looking for the flash Q. But Wiggly finds it out. Electric Q proxy that is down. CLG grab first blood. And Wiggly's gonna force Lyra's flash as well. Yeah, and he saw he had red buff, not blue, so he's gonna go right into the jungle. Biofrost is gonna come here with him. This might come down to a smite. Lyra's gonna go check. Doesn't have a ward available, so he has to face check this. Smite up for both as well, but Lyra's low. Wiggly might just force a fight here. Although for Vivid now gonna roam up. Who's gonna get the blue buff? It's gonna be close. Smite down. Lyra grabs it. Lyra gets the smite, so it's not stolen away there. And they're gonna see Wiggly with very low mana going after this crab. Does he want more? Biofrost is saying no, no. Yeah. Who he also pushed the wave because he even roamed down and Biofrost still there ready with the stun. It was a great turn there from Biofrost to actually realize that Hakuo had go, gone too far forward. And this is your Acer Predator replay here where Wiggly walks up, goes for the red buff proc onto Apollo. The exhaust comes down when Wiggly isn't really doing any damage because the flash went out. And then Lyra checks Wiggly in the brush and then Biofrost is immediately on that side. So Hakuo went forward, doesn't quite connect the Winter's Bite, the flash Q basically makes it so that he sells his life out for that. And Solo, is that it again? Well, oh, Solo's already too far forward. Yeah, Smokescreen down. Wiggly going to get this wait, one. Wait, there's a turret shot. Yeah, goodbye. Oh, man. Wait, there, there was a turret shot. He had to make doubly sure. Yeah, you guys got to see him die. Doesn't count unless you see him go down. But still two quick kills for CLG. Solo going to TP back here to top lane. Yeah. Man, a crystal longsword looking not so great. Yeah, and that was one where Solo, he was too far forward. He saw Wiggly on the ward and just said, I know that I'm dead. So he just decided to press uh, press up, get whatever he could in terms of the remaining CS. I'll see that right here. Yeah, he spots Wiggly here. There's no way he's making it out. Says, OK, I, I see where this stands. And then, he, ah, he took aggro a little too. Because those minions, those minions are just blocking the big wave from going forward. So ends up getting him killed. Draws aggro. They were trying for a very creative steal, but Wiggly will secure the buff. They were get some vision, but Wiggly back down to his wolf camp is back in the bot lane here. Biofrost. Get some poke down. Sticks they doing the same here, just throwing out the arrows. Picks up the little health pack. And everything continues as normal. Looks like Wiggly is gonna make his first back of the game. You can see two early jungle items there for Lyra, and now that's versus Red Smite Longsword plus two control wards for Wiggly. Ooh, two control wards. He's trying to impress somebody. <laughs> one is just normal, yeah. but two is you really trying to show yeah, off. The, the one control ward early is like, your, especially your first back, that's the one where you're like, all right, I'm doing my due to Two control wards, it's like, look at me, man. Look, look at He's me. now a true member of CLG. Yeah. <laughs> By two control wards first back, there's a TP in here from Huhi. Hey, I don't even think the support wants to buy two control wards on the first back. Ignite, electrocute, biofrost bud. No, no, not no, at no, all. No. It's all about, it's just straight up buys like an end zone. Luden's Echo, Lil oh, Bane. Yes. First buy chain would be great <laughs> if biofrost wanted to go that direction until I mean, he does clear out the minions here. That was like the bard one trick build for a while, it was like Luden's Echo, Lich Bane. The amount of items I've seen work on bard from high level bard plays is interesting. I've seen a lot of rapid fire cannon before. Mm -hmm. Seeing a lot of Biofrost getting attacked by Hakuo. Good block on the stun lap there by putting the up the Unbreakable. But Ward is down, Wiggly's here, and even with Lyra behind the turret there, but do not feel like they can press forward. Now, the, the Trundle is not a very good early fighter at all in terms of against the Graves. Like, tank junglers and melee junglers, sure. But the Graves just shuts him down, so anything that he wants to get involved in, even if he's, he's not a really good ganker either, uh, the Trundle. It's no hard CC, just has to use the pillar. So it does become very difficult to kind of nail somebody down and make it so that you can get a kill. Even when they have no flash, it's pretty hard. Kind of at the mercy of Wiggly's aggression, and that has been the early stage of this game, certainly. He's been involved in both of the kills, pretty much. Only has the one kill, but he was topside to watch Solo die. All right, I'm watching 
Biofrost, one control ward. Oh no. A. So the true support of CLG is Wigger. And, so and then you saw 6 a Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> you, you, when you see somebody buy two to three control wards on their first or second back, you know they're trying to impress somebody. Because you never want to just be like, he played well, like when coaches are talking about, he played well, he just didn't buy enough control wards. Like, you can fix that instantaneously. That's true. It's Lee right here in top lane, looking for Fallen Bandit, but that's a Mundo with ulti. So Lee just gonna have to take the wards instead. Eat some briefcases for his trouble. Fallen Bandit not feeling too bad, despite some pressure here in the lane. He's down pretty substantially to Solo in CS, and Solo actually did go Klepto. Something we didn't check in with just yet, so. He's certainly looking to play more to farm the lane, but yep. like you said, Wiggly's pressure has been strong, so he's going to use that bot lane and his aggression to take the Drake for CLG. Yeah, has a good CS lead on the top side for Solo, has the Kleptomancy like you said, and so he's basically trying to farm off the uh, the Mundo and Fallen Bandit, even though, even though he got that assist, remember he blew his flash to just kind of see Solo die. So when you blow your flash like that, it means that you can't be aggressive either, because you might get ganked. So the fact he blew that meant that he got the kill, but it wasn't as much of an advantage as he would have liked. Wiggly's still invading. Actually gonna start the blue buff up here. Yeah, and I don't think they have any wards down to spot him actually taking it, so I think he's gonna get away with this, and then Lyra's gonna walk up and kind of see it right before it dies. Yep. Goes to the Gromp instead, but Wiggly now level six, successfully counter jungling there. And this is not just Wiggly doing well, this is also the bottom lane doing well and setting him up, because Biofrost with the sweeper, to let him in early, and then also controlling the bottom side of the map. And he knows that Lyra's here. Finds a control ward, looking for a potential dive. They're actually just gonna force here. That's a great chain of corruption from Stixay. Goodbye, Apollo. Exhaust is down until Wiggly, but the robot from who he's gonna be in a kill again. Biopros actually grabs the double kill. Oh, there's no minions, there's no minions. Whoa. Yeah, GP ult was pretty good there from Solo. But not enough to get an extra kill for themselves. CLG come up trumps in bot lane. Comes up trumps. Yeah, the, the appropriate cheer. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Did a lot of work in the entire game so far. The sweeper start very heads up. Also, because he has uh, zombie poro, so he's taking sweeper early in the game, and then he's just zombie poroing where he would normally put a ward anyway. And then they're playing up with the help of Wiggly. And so who he comes in here too? Really good chain of corruption into this the burst there. Valfrost picks up that first kill. Gets the second kill. Needs to walk back around. The Round the little trophy to get out, but perfectly done there. And again, CLG up 4 0. Actually, now a thousand gold ahead just off the kill money they've collected. Still objectives to play for here. No Drake's being picked up just yet. No, there is one mountain. Yeah, it's a mountain. It's hiding, excuse me. Yeah, Wiggly pretty much soloed that. That's right before he got the blue buff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's hiding in the shrubbery. So he trying to clear this out. But it has done a good job pressuring here. He's up a little in CS, but. Really, Clutch just feels like they're kind of farming it out at the whim of CLG's early aggression. Yeah, Clutcher, you know, they have farm advantages in top and mid, but that hasn't been the focus here. In that bottom side of the map, playing off Stixa Biofrost. And so Wiggly is kind of, I would say, really putting the pressure on here where he got he got that kill top and capitalized off of Lyra, or off of uh, Solo overextending, and then went to the bottom side multiple times now. So he's making it really hard for Apollo and Hakuo to get into this game. Lyra was on the Rift Herald, but I think Wiggly's now gonna check. I don't think he'll be there in time though. Lyra ready with the smite, so could be a successful steal away of this objective. Yep, I'm gonna get it from right into their noses. And Lyra's gonna pick that one up. We'll see where he's able to use it. This can potentially change the momentum and maybe get them mid lane, because Febavin, like you said, had been pressuring. There's a blue buff for Huhi. There's no blue buff for Febivin because it was stolen away by Wiggly. Yeah, despite all the good moves here from CLG, still waiting for either team to really convert on objectives. So that Rift Child should help Clutch get one of these turrets, maybe more if they can set something up here. Fallen Bandit still farming up against Solo, who is ahead. 30 CS plus Kleptomancy money. Moving in pretty fast for that Trinity Force. Ah, returning to the scene of the crime. Might as well. Fallen Bandit a bit behind, but he's fine. He's kind of farming it out right now. Make sure to pressure, get the first turret for yourself. 
against a team with Rift Herald, that's always impressive. Yep, and potentially, like, better than can't do much mid, he has to back because he had low mana and who he has that blue, and because they stole it away. So Wiggly, Biofrost are actually doing so much in this game to just control the entire map, because everything's connected in League of Legends, right? You get that pressure off the bottom, you start getting the blue buff, puts the mid laner behind, you give your own blue, and then you get to pressure, and then this happens where Lyra is now, he has to go mid, right? Cohen Bandit about to get ganked. He's got ulti. He's gonna pop it, Lyra's gonna subjugate. Here's a TP from Huhi. Now Lyra's gonna be forced out of there. Fallen Bandit looking to chase. Take down the control ward, find the root. Lyra forced to flash. Interesting. Decided to go for the flash there. Over the wall instead of running further because he doesn't know what's going on in the jungle. And especially since Biofrost is now out on the map too. Biofrost is about to be on the top side. He's actually scouted the whole jungle and realized there's nothing here. Lyra hasn't been able to place wards inside of their top jungle. And so it's completely dark. It's just something about the, that area of the map, perhaps. The questionable flash zone. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple people have committed their summoners oh, yeah. around there. In just this game. Yeah. Something about it. People are, players are drawn to that spot. Oh, oh. Biofrost. <laughs> it's a bait. It's a bait. Run. It's not a bait. I mean, Harold uh, channeled there in mid lane. Watch for the arrow. Oh, very nice. Who are you going to get? Smacked in the head by that one. Forced to flush out of there. Shelly in. Takes down the turret. So you're going to have to deal with this. Looks like they weren't completely ready for that. Because other than no follow-up stun or anything like that, they just wanted that turret just to even things up. But it does get them the middle turret, which is worth a little bit more. And map pressure, a 6A. And left alone on the bottom side to just farm this up. And they're actually swapping lanes, too. So this big minion wave isn't even going to go over to Stixay. It's going to go over to Solo. You see Stixay actually just staying here and pressuring his turret. Biofrost is still here. Stixay finishing a Blade of the Ruin King. Solo with his Trinity Force. But actually, in 2v1, with two more on the side as Blue Buff once again is going to get stolen. Solo's going to have to ult the wave and try and finish this off. Barrel combo does land on the stick save, but we'll just clean up the rest of these minions, life steal up, and keep up that pressure. Yep, and that's an immense amount of pressure too. It's been a while since we've seen a bottom lane kind of take over, stay in the bottom lane, not swap, and then just pressure it down. That's exactly what they're doing here too, because the Bard, it's like there were four support bands thrown their way total with the Morgana, the Tom Kench, then the Alistar, and the Zillion too. And also keep in mind that the Braum was taken away, so five supports denied. Biofrost says time to play the Bard, the classic from him, and it's one that's just causing so much pressure. Oh, Amanda also in some trouble. Apollo, though, that too far forward, about uh, to get cleaved. TP in, he's got to protect Apollo. Fallen Bandit, he's going all in. He's going all out. Run, run. Hakuo is going to force the flash away, but he does live for a little while longer. Yeah, that was actually Apollo making a huge mistake because he walked forward, thought that he'd be able to get to the turret and give it the last finishing touches. The Fallen Bandit is up in front of the minion wave, catches it, and doesn't let them get to the turret. Nice stun there, but for Vivint. Can't quite finish it off. Stixay stays bot side and takes the turret. And meanwhile, Wiggly optimizing, getting the Cloud Drake. So CLG are doing uh, so much that's good right now, and they're doing it at the same time, where they aren't wasting any moment. And again, despite these objective traits, CLG did get the first turret. They're actually up 2,000 gold and two Drakes through all of this. Just kind of keeping that pressure lead against Clutch despite the map being opened up a little bit more and trade starting to happen. And now Biofrost is freed up. This is one of Bard's favorite times in oh the goodness. game to just roam around. Both outer turrets are down. Or sorry, the two ones from the bottom side are down. So he'll probably rotate and try to get control of the top side with Drake not being an issue. And he'll play between the mid and the top. And it looks like they're putting Rise, they're putting Huhi in the top side. It's kind of be a 1-3-1 one, one right now. So Biofrost is to roam around, has the mobility boots. Kind of look for picks. They've been denying Febivin blues. That was another blue that went over to them. They're going to hand this one off to Huhi in the side lane. Febivin, he's feeling the pain. Since he's split pushing that much easier. Febivin, I think, he's not got a single blue so far. I think Clutch have actually got one total. And they almost lost the first one as well. The CLG continuing to play together. Time to counter jungle once more using that bar pressure. There hasn't been an uncontested blue. That's from uh, on the side of Clutch Gaming's jungle. Yeah, that bottom blue has just gotten a lot of attention. The Riven also took it back here, so maybe a window for CLG to press onto this mid turret, but Lyra is here to help the waves. Fallen Bandit hanging out, looking for Solo. Execution scoring already done. Fallen Bandit gonna get a proc as the barrel combo. Let Solo just run around him. 
Wiggly wants this tart. By the looks of things, he's going to move up here with the rest of his team. What's the counter move, though, from Clutch? Rather than shoving mid, looking for Fallen Bandit, Bandit in the bottom side. And there's no objective, no neutral objective to really play for, so this might be a push for two turrets from both sides. We'll have to see. Realm up ready. Yep. Trying to get the minions, trying to get the minions. Got a couple in there. And now the rest of the wave's coming. GP ult there from Solo. The wave's going to catch up, though, but Apollo's there to make sure it goes down. And that's going to call off the push from CLG. And they're looking for that bottom turret. It's almost down. I feel like they have so much momentum and pressure here that they can actually... Oh, wait. Wiggly stun. Follow up the arc. For Bivin, but it's really good. So good. Bio Frost gives Wiggly his onions and saves him from Forbidden's ulti. I'm going to let the crowd take this one. Why do people <laughs> stop playing Bard? Uh, it's too risky. I don't know. I don't know. I don't believe it. It's like the, the Zyra thing, right? But, oh, it gets hit. Biofrost. I gotcha. The Midas touch. That's literally picture perfect ulti from Biofrost. Not a single ultimate sphere touched Wiggly today. That was so good. Bard plays like that just makes me so happy. Not, I'd be tilted, by the way. But it's, it's not even like ultying the Syndra. It's like, oh, I gotta stop the Syndra to stop him from ulting. It's like, no, I gotta ult team my I guy. I got time for that. I was perfect. All right, well, now push on the mid lane from CLG. Forbidden recovering from the last play that he just experienced, running back towards the mid lane, but we'll be there in time to wave clear that out. He's pretty strong as well. I mean, farmed up to Ludens plus double pen, so. Plenty threatening against the likes of 6A. And even Wiggly, he almost felt it there. Just need a little bit of help. CLG is looking to play maybe for that next Drake, but it's not up for a few minutes. I mean, they do have three turrets apiece, which is nice. The top outer actually dead, but mid lane's going to be the top one here. And CLG, remember, good early game team. Mid game has been the fall off for them, all split. And they're hitting that point now. Good early game. Clutch Gaming, remember, they're the team that likes to take it. 40 minutes, 35-minute wins, right? And the 35-minute win for Clutch is a fast win. <laughs> That's how they win quickly, is 35 minutes. They love to stall for the late game. It's kind of been their MO all split long, even last split. Yeah, I feel like all year long almost. It's been the identity of the Clutch Gaming team. So, CLG really want to make sure that they can close it pretty quickly have this advantage and they want to snowball it. I like this for mid-game productivity. Just, you know, moving people through the jungle. Oh, great touch from Wiggly. Actually gets out from under the stung with quick draw. Clutch collapsing, portal away, and back to mid lane. Bard is really great for those reconnaissance missions where you go into the enemy jungle and it's like, well, bring a partner to help you ward. You bring somebody to help you ward, you throw down trinkets, they can all get out together. Ulti incoming, yeah, Apollo gets Whoa, back. the toe! For the cube, but the block is there. Ulti also there from GP. Now the ult turned back around to who he is forced to flash away. Solo here, but 6A shooting away. Hako is going to get low. He should be dead. Going to be a tough one here. He's just going to get cut off there as Wiggly able to get the last hit. They start that one off with Biofrost once again. He's catching Apollo barely. And Hakuo went too aggressive at the end there. This game. So in favor of CLG, 5-0, but the 2K. See, right now, Biofrost is on fire, 100%. He's really close, too. The mobility boots makes it so that he, the Bard ultimate travel time is lower because he's closer. He throws it down. They want to change. They want to turn this around. Stix is doing well against Solo, and then Fallen Bandit's coming up. And then Hakuo went forward, ends up eating the Chain of Corruption, cleanses, but he doesn't have Flash. He has actually swapped his Flash to a cleanse. So, didn't have that. Wiggly once again, soloing a Drake. Looking for Cloud here as CLG want to collect their third overall. Again, the pressure keeps mounting. It does feel like that mid out of turret is the thing kind of keeping Clutch in the balance here. The 6A has two items, two Haze building up to two. Firefrost making plays all day. Yeah, kind of a uh, Febivin's lane. The wave clear is really intense for this competition. It's decent, it's, ra it's ranged. Solo, ring around the ro Rosie versus Fallen Bandit. He's just, just Fallen Clutching, he wants him. Uh, he wants a solo kill, uh, solo. Uh, He's gonna be protected by Hako or Fallen Bandit, maybe now regrets using that flash. Gonna keep running though. Yeah, his team's not out, not out on the map. Even if you got a kill, 
I don't, I don't know what he would have He's so impossible to kill, though. He's walking walk away. away. Walk away. Oh, here's the TP. Oh, walk in, walk Dirt. in. Who he sticks there joining. Double. Arrow lands onto him, but Apollo now under threat, forced to flash away. Sticks looking to channel it. Alco, flash unbreakable to try and save him. But Sticks has to get out of there. The all this time a little late from Biofrost. And now he's going to die to the Syndra ult, but who he going to turn it around. They'll kill Lyra. They actually killed Solo as well. But Vivian, though, can still find some pickoffs here as Hakuo tries to find someone in the jungle. Well, that's a two for two at the end of the day. Ends up going to this big fiesta in the jungle. They just had everybody collapse and Fallen Bandit. I was like, your team's not out on the map. Not done. Who he What's gets done, though. The Vivian calm in that situation. Still just trying to keep chasing here and look for another kill. If Vivian is alive, that means the mid turret is safe. I see that one more time here. Fallen Bandit. Yeah, now he's running back in. Everybody's kind of run for the hills. The double TP, Apollo with the point blank. Ultimate and the flash over the wall. And a great block from Hakuho. That was an arrow that was going to kill Apollo. And then the save there onto Solo, who he ends up getting him right out of the Bard ultimate. And then it's a two for two because Bevavin shows up. And he's been the one kind of keeping Clutch in there. Yep. He's got one of their only kills in this game. Two items now on the Syndra. Very strong at this stage of the game. CLG is still really dictating pace in this game versus Clutch. Still up about 2k. Again, as, I think as soon as something happens in the mid game, if CLG can break this out of turret cleanly, I think they have so much more dominance over the map. Wait. Or Two Man Baron. Two Man Baron. Use who he. Oh, Ash Arrow. There you go. Hot shot. Spot We've been hot. had. Out of there. Clear of the. Maybe a target could change corruption. Hakuo going to try and block it off. The GP ult's nice as well. Ash Arrow in, but it only attacks someone in the back line. And that's Hakuo down. Did save the jungler, though. Yep, saves the jungler, so the smite still stays alive in terms of the potential for it. And Biofrost, he's fast. He's got ult oh, as well, but gonna grab Solo just going to tie back around towards the mid lane. CLG really want to try this Baron. Yeah, just bait him to it. This is CLG kind of playing the way that they used to, where you get an early game lead, and then you go bait objectives. They haven't baited objectives in a long time. Run more. Oh, they already picked up Solo. He had to face check. They didn't have anything left to really get in there. It looks like mid turret now, maybe the take for CLG. Just happy to bait for the Baron and then take it. An easier objective off it. Although Forbidden is back, so once again, mid turret is safe. Yeah, even though they've been taking his blue over and over again, I don't think he got the last one either. I think Kuki got two back to back. And Solo, I mean, they don't really have anything that they can do here. There's so much darkness, you'd have to send a hawk shot. If that's on cooldown, and the arrow's on cooldown, and the blue trinket's on cooldown, and your ultimate's on cooldown, there's no way to check that without somebody, whether it's your team on the top part, uh, half of it, or you face checking from that angle, you have to walk towards the Baron. You know, sometimes the bush has people in it. Sometimes it doesn't. That's the risk you have to take. It always has a Garen, though. That's the That's true. Put that is the rule. <laughs> Biofrost. I like what he's doing with this build as well. It looks like uh, Andrew's Torment on the way. Arrow. Oh. Who's cutting highlights for this game? I don't know. <laughs> the Biofrost? It's going to be a lot. Hopefully there's a solo Biofrost cam right now. I feel like you can just run these back to back and tell the story of the game so far. Yeah, there's been some ones where I'm just like, I feel like League of Legends is just favoring him right now. Like the toe of the ash right inside the ultimate. Right there, it looked like the bard just had a big arch in his back like he was posing for Instagram or something. Just like, <laughs> what? How was he able to dodge that arrow? And again, like, what's he doing around this Baron pressure? It's still really scary for Clutch. Apollo, ooh, with the double double CC chain. Hakuo gonna block the rest of it. 6 8 chain of corruption was good. Unfortunately, he can't catch Apollo despite not having Flash. And again, like how much better do these plays look if the minions are just pushed up a little bit further? Yeah, that, that's true. Once you can get that turret down. But it's been Febavin for Clutch Gaming, who's been the one who's the rock right now, just kind of keeping him in it. Blue trinkets. And you can see all of them are like, we have to group up and face check. No more one person face checks. Do we play the game? Our CLG on Baron. Answer is no. Clutch Gaming finally get the info. Clutch wake up in 40 seconds. Clutch finally clear out all the vision around Baron. CLG just back to pushing out the lane, setting up for the next objective, I guess. Uh-oh. 
Is it, yeah, they're like, let's go get the blue buff again from Clutch Gaming. It's like, Solo's gonna take it so like nobody else can take it. Just to make sure that at least they get their blue buff. It's not Feather been getting it, but at least it's someone. Kills I think, again, still looking to set up around this mid turret, but this time Apollo's here. Clear out those minions with the Rune and Hurricane. CLG still playing it pretty slow. They can look for Drake number four in five seconds. Yep. Cloud Drake up very, very shortly. And that's going to be who he on the top side with no teleport for a bit. 30 seconds. Pretty that's relatively long time. Wow, I was like, it's 30 seconds. Yeah, I was about to be like, yeah, it's probably 10. Wow. Cloud Drake though over to CLG. No real Baron threat either for Clutch. Clutch Gaming do have control of the area, though. And that's still important if you want them to face check you. It does feel like Clutch uh, kind of farming their way up to the point that feel comfortable fighting in this game. Solo's pretty bone, Apollo also doing well, although he's yeah. kind of woefully behind 6A as far as the numbers go. That's true, but you gotta watch for those arrows. That's kind of how he gets in. 6A, 1-1-7, one, one, and seven. Large, large amount of participation here. And then he's also got this massive, almost 70 CS lead for himself at 27 minutes. He's kind of setting us up nicely. Bot wave is pushing for them. Huhi back to pressure on the top lane as well. And and 6A has teleport, and he's been playing the side lane. He's level 15. Apollo has been on mid clear duty. He's level 12. He's been sharing experience this entire time. Whereas 6A is kind of getting solo EXP whenever he's picking up these minions. Just like right now. Everybody was in mid lane there for clutch to clear it out. And 6A is like the only one getting experience on these ones. Yeah, solo new TP for 70 seconds, by the way. So he does have to answer in hit wave there. He's going to look for a kill for Biven. He's going to be forced to flash away, but here's 6A looking for the chain. Not over the wall, though. But CLG again, back to pressuring Baron. Yep, getting the flash, though, for the ultimate is worth it. Biofrost will have that back up in 90 seconds. And he has a haunting guy. He's ready. Yeah, DeAndre's looks like it'll be on the table uh, for him. Oh, oh hits Biofrost oh. this time. Goodbye. Flashes away from the parlay that was already in the air. Solo gets an easy kill and some extra gold to boot. Yep. Bio daddy. <laughs> all right, and unfortunately for CLG, all their careful play, that pick loses them not just the vision around the Baron, but maybe the buff as well if Clutch want to force it. I don't think they'll force it right now. They don't have the coverage Clutch Gaming. It's even harder once your support is dead. Re-established vision, but... Good oh, 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 oh. He's dead. Actually, the block's not fast enough there for Hako. And now Hako in trouble. Realm or Brandley to try and pick up for Vivian. But it's shut down by the stun. That's going to force Lyra to flash away. That was a good call there from CLG because there was no teleport on Solo. It's coming up now. And he didn't have his ultimate because he used it in the last fight. So CLG actually caught him because Solo was topside. So it was a straight up 4v4 that they won off the engage. CLG looking to try and take this Lyra down. Lyra, I don't think you can make it in time. They have no vision, so the smite is there for CLG. Yeah, you had to guess when you put down that ward. And they were just too late because there was that Mountain Drake behind CLG. See this one more time. This is after Biofrost died. This is the start here where Stixe throws out the ulti, hits Apollo. Hakuo has to jump in, save him, but doesn't quite get there in time. And Fallen Bandit is already on top of him. They get those two kills, and that's kind of like everybody's right in the meat grinder there. The Mundo and all that damage from Stixe that's coming out. He's so far ahead. And I think it would have been worse if that Realm Walk completed. So good presence of mind from Forbidden to cancel that one out with a stun over the wall, but CLG now with Baron buff. Surely the mid out of turret's gonna die soon. Surely. Uh, I would assume so. It's one that you would assume died like 15 minutes ago. It's one of the most resilient mid out of turrets I've seen. Yeah. Still standing here at 30 and a half minutes. But CLG, no. Easy to guide the wave in and make sure they take that off the map. Yeah, Feathervin's on the top side now. The wave clear is much diminished in the mid lane, and they'll get this one off this way. The rule continues for Vivian, not in mid lane. Need out of turret dead. The CLG is still pressuring. Lasted a long time, 30 minutes. That's more than some teams last, let alone an outer mid, or tur mid turret when you're losing. So Clutch Gaming, I mean, they go late because they can hold on to games. They can turtle them out. You can have to dodge a lot of pressure here. This Fallen Bandit will get the bot lane going as well. And also remember, Rise, we've seen a lot of Rise blue pushing today. With the TP up for who he, he can comfortably pressure using that Baron buff. Two minutes still for Clutch Gaming to try and defend these turrets. And 1-3-1. Oh, actually, Stix is going to go for the red buff and pick that one up because their jungle is up. 
Yeah, he'll feel relatively safe too because he has QSS. So Ash arrows aren't an issue for him. There's a QSS or Mercurial Scimitar on Wiggly. Wiggly, let's check back in with him. 4 0 and 4. He's been doing really well playing alongside Biofrost. So it's a good, honestly, one of the best debuts that you could ask for in terms of controlling the enemy with the blue buff, keeping Febivin down. I'll take the objective there as well. Pull the mana maybe too far in the front line. And oh, well, good kill. Oh, really oh, nice oh. from Lyra. So Bivin is going to get that kill, but Arrow's going to miss. Biofrost going to pull it out of the way. And who he does take the top tier two as well. Yeah, we probably keep talking about uh, Wiggly here from Academy. Said, you know, focus on that because that was oh coming in from the back side, kind of just waltzing on through, assuming they aren't going to do anything to him. And they do everything to him. They have execution calling. They have all this damage they can pump into him. But sure, it took a while, but they were able to just stop him, and he didn't flash. Don't know if it was up yet, but I assume that it was, and he kind of just held it. It didn't seem like kind of felt like he would make it there. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. He had, he did have the flash up, decided not to spend it, which I am okay with. I like what you pointed out as well for Kuhi's Rise with the QSS. Normally you see a lot of cleanses in these kind of matchups from Ash Syndra. Really does set up as like, hey, take Clint in mid lane, but if he doesn't have TP, he can't do what he's doing right now and pressure all these waves. So, still do set up well. Clutch Gaming still fighting from a relatively significant deficit. And the QSS, like you said, will shut down a lot of those pick options or those engages. And Mountain Drake on the table, Clutch Gaming. Have the inside track to it, and the Baron buff is about to drop off. So they've lost all of their inner and outer turrets across the map. Six turrets to three. Actually, no, surely not. That's actually pretty close. Lira, though, is able to swing the objective down. And CLG, I think, are just trying to push down mid and take maybe an inhibitor turret here on the top side. Yeah, gotta, get, gotta get vision here. Make sure that they can press uh, pressure afterwards. Now this is the hard part of the game where you gotta try to break the turrets, but... I wonder what they'll do here. There's potential for Biofrost ulting a turret and just forcing things down. It's one of the things that you can do with Bard. And now it looks like they'll just romp through the jungle. Take out the control wards, put down vision of their own. Really also continuing uh, what I assume a, to be a pretty high count of jungle percentage this game. I, I was looking multiple times during the game and it's like his jungle is like all up and he's just kind of living in Lyra's jungle. But now, Solo's at that point where he has Storm Razor, Yomu, Unity Force. If he can get barrels onto squishy members, which is hard to do, it can actually turn fights. Because he he's the person who's been doing really well on this team. Bevan has been doing well, um, but like relative to his opponent, he's not crushing who he or anything like that. He's still doing well kind of in the face of adversity. Whereas Solo is actually thriving here. 80 CS up, 90 CS up actually. Ooh, not quite hitting Lyra there. Sticks eight. Missing out on the ultimate. Yeah, just short there. The region quite last long enough. But the red buff does go over to six so the COD continuing to press forward in clutches half of the map. Who he basically is permanently in top lane. So Forbidden now gonna have to go and deal with the minions. He though taking it back, so looks like he does have some items to pick up. CLG just happy to reset with Baron coming back up in a minute and a half. Stick say, I think can afford the Runance Hurricane and then have all these on hits, the Rage Blade plus the actually Rapid Fire Cannon. Oh, looking for effective range. So saying it's not going to be team fight front back as much as it's going to be just at least getting this damage off. This wants to shoot the turrets too, I think. Yeah, that's Maybe a, in a siege. That's the thing too that I don't think about it as much uh, on champions that aren't Caitlyn or Tristana, but you're absolutely right. You can actually use it to just walk up. And it's probably even better on somebody who has low mobility and no way to really get away. So keep in your distance, keep yourself safe. Yeah, CLG get free time from the objective. very easy to take with Grave and Varus, but CLG of kind of grinding it out now against Clutch, who, like you said, are very good at delaying games and pulling them to a point where they can win in the late game. Yeah, they lose very slowly to kind of grind you down and. If you aren't able to keep things tight there. They dodged that, that was really smart. Oh, see from Biofrost might set it up. Hawkwise and Breakable about to run out. Q's gonna find two, Latch is good. Wiggly there with the ulti, almost takes out three in the front side. But who he, oh my goodness, that barrel. Yeah, that was a money barrel right there. Clears out almost the entire wave. Like I said, he's at that point. Solo has those big power spike items, those big ticket items. 
for the gangplanks, landing those barrel combos. Got I mean, would have been happy with a pick there, but just trying to apply pressure and maximize the advantage they have before Baron respawns. Again, another blue buff on Tahuhi. They don't have to worry about Elder Dragon for a while, so now it's time to move over and threaten this Baron. Remember, Stick State, despite being bot right now, it's going to walk over and has TP. Silji are ready with their globals to try and make something happen here. And yeah, Triple Cloud Drake, they get around pretty fast. And everybody in! Party Portal! Did that Blue Ward see them? I think so. Oh, actually, they're not going to get caught. He's in the front line. That's a bad one to lose right now. Wiggly does have ulti, but can't quite get through the shield. Lyra has Warmogs, so he's going to regen this all up if he's not touched. Steel G is rushing this, though. They're going to try and take it as fast as they can. Lyra maybe can get in for a steal. Oh, going to no. get knocked up by the Baron. He doesn't have flash, so I don't think it mattered. And the Baron once again goes over to CLG. The Baron's rigged. What was that? <laughs> it went over the walls. Not even anybody near him. This guy wasn't a threat. He has tentacles in back there. That is crazy. But Lyra has no chance to get to the Blast Cone. And Solo, ooh. Yeah, that's good from Huhi to disengage and not greed for that and go too far forward. And again, Huhi just applying all this pressure. Once again, Baron is back, so Huhi can basically stay here and just constantly shove waves into the turret and threaten them. Elder Dragon also up in a minute 35. It's four Drakes to one. So CLG get a ton of value after, after picking it up. And again, we're just going to see if we can answer the question of can CLG take inhibitor turrets? That's really been the only thing stopping them this game. I mean, it's been something stopping them this whole season, and they find themselves tied for last place. So that early game has gone well, just progressing the game. Seems like you change the players, change Wiggly, Fallen Bandit into the roster. Oh, same thing. issues. Oh. All right, good thing he had QSS. Flash over the arrow, but able to get out. Player Frost portals him away. Fallen Bandit sticking around for maybe too long here. Team's going to be back to try and save him. Player Frost has ulti, so Fallen Bandit should be okay. Got to watch the top side. There's Huhi just pressuring in it, pressuring it in. Remember, they have the Baron buff. We're even here to answer, but Baron creeps up pretty strong. Fallen Bandit sticking around. He's trying to pressure the turret. CLG maybe just happy to take mid here. Fallen Bandit also pressuring on Solo. Every cleaver oh, matters. Oh, Apollo, Apollo hard in mid falls. Apollo is dead. Sticks able to pick him off. Lyra gonna try and get a kill here. But I think maybe they can do it. No, the spear lands and takes out the Varus. But here's who he now gets a rune to the front line. Lyra dead. Parkour now is everyone's gonna flash away for Bivin. It's gonna go golden. Solo getting shot down. Wiggly able to take him out. But Bivin's oh. gonna die here as well. And CLG, they swoop into the clutch base. And that's going to be a back from Huhi into a teleport to end the game. And CLG, it's been a tough season for them, but a win here it matters so much for the bright of their fans. Wiggly and Fallen Bandit coming up and making it look good. Wiggly dominating Lyra. Wait, the the Wait, into the fountain! They take the hook where they get the ace! And CLG are going to take down Clutch. End it with style, baby. Turret fountain dive there to end it and take home the victory for CLG. That's a Wiggly sponsored rise from what, by the way. <laughs> he's uh, he's got words for players, certainly. Kind of a fun guy. Likes to throw shade every now and then. And whoever's cool that was, that was a fun game <laughs> for CLG fans to watch. Yeah, absolutely. CLG, they haven't had a game like that in a while. One where they were crushing, one where there wasn't as much worry about maybe the game slingshotting or rubber banding back at them. And Wiggly had a large part to do with that. Stixe, in particular, too, was that bottom lane combination of Stixe and Biofrost. They looked good. Huhi also looked good. But they didn't have Rain over. They didn't have Darshan. They had Wiggly and Fallen Bandit. Fallen Bandit did his job. And it looked like Wiggly was teaming up with Biofrost and Stixe a lot for that game. Yeah, it certainly felt like CLG picked a pretty stable comp for themselves. Huhi was playing PvE for a lot of that game, but was still effective in applying pressure. And yeah, the stars really violent wiggly, as you called it, making sure the plays happen. I mean, I feel like the CLG dual lanes had a pretty good year, all things considered, given how many struggles the team has had. But for that, we are going to send it down to Obli May and CLG's jungler, Wiggly. Thanks, guys. Wiggly, congratulations on the game. But first off, I'm a little hurt. I talked to you yesterday for the CLG Academy games, and you didn't tell me that you were going to be in today. So when did you find out that you were playing this weekend? Oh, uh, well, I kind of knew the whole week, sort of. It was never ex explicitly said, but I kind of knew that I was going to play. Um, but it was made official like last night, so that's when I knew, actually, for sure. So it sounds like you had a relatively short amount of time to kind of work with the main team and uh, start your coordination with them. So how did that go? 
Uh, yeah, we were preparing for our academy matches, so we were just kind of tossing players in and out, like seeing how they match with the main team and also preparing for the academy uh, semifinals. But uh, it was pretty easy meshing with the main team guys. Like, they're all really nice, and they just helped me a lot, like just how, how their team functions and all that sort of thing. So it's pretty easy. So you got to play some warm-up games in academy and then come to LCS yeah. on the big stage. So how was your first game? Uh, honestly, it was pretty like easy. I, I don't think anything went too, too <laughs> well. It was just a, uh, it was just a uh, kind of by the books. Like our level one went really well. Like we got everything we wanted. So we just played the game out one three one super slow. And uh, there's a couple of blunders, but overall it was pretty easy. I think. Now, what would you say is your goal for this weekend playing on the main team? Are you looking to prove yourself? Uh, I don't. I mean, of course, I'm looking to prove myself. But at the same time, I'm just like trying to get wins. Like. Just playing the game. I enjoy playing, so there's not like a, a true goal or anything, but it's been fun. You can end up carrying both the Academy and the main LCS roster, but Wiggly, congratulations again. And to wrap up the day, let's hear from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Avli. A big performance on the LCS stage there from that man on your screen, Wiggly, to pick up a win for CLG, move into 6 and 11. But uh, they put together a fairly solid win with a new look for the squad, both Wiggly and Fallen Bandit into the lineup. Yeah, and I think uh, both them had good moments. Fallen Bandit got his signature Mundo, and it felt like they <laughs> got it when that's your signature champ. Hey, he's he's like I, nine, he's like nine right. and eleven in Academy with this thing, and once again gets his first LCS win on it. So uh, you can see Solo has a good GP, and they want to kind of counterpick it, but Wiggly on Gray's really kind of took over this early game, making plays in the bot lane and in the top side all over the place. Yeah, and this early game uh, was fairly familiar when watching the COG game. Right, yeah. Oh man, I got this Graves with good early game ganks. May as well be rain over, right? Mm -hmm. But what actually changed this game was the fact that beyond the mid game, they did find enough picks to close out the game. This is the first win COG has had in the second half of the split. It breaks their massive loss streak. They were on an eight game loss streak before this game. And Absolutely. I mean, Clutch did have some good plays and that's kind of why you see that plateauing between the like 18 and 28 minute mark uh, because they were finding some pickoffs, but it was still the kind of thing where you never feel like they had pressure. It was more like they would just punish CLG when they stepped a little bit too far forward. Again, to Jad's play, it kind of perfectly illustrates the, the difference between the previous CLG roster and this one is like, yeah, you get that early lead, then yeah. there's the plateau, Six. and then up to this point, in this season, this part, you would though. then see it kind of fall back into the other team's favor. This, uh, you know, this version of CLG able to find the necessary picks and plays to end up pushing for a victory. Of course, both of these teams are outside of the playoff picture. Yeah. So we talk about, uh, you know, what these organizations want to do here in terms of closing out their split. Obviously, you want to end on a high note, right? You still want mm -hmm. to pick up the wins that you can, but uh, in particular, looking at CLG, I, I think it's a fantastic step to take an opportunity to give these guys a moment on the stage, test their medal against some LCS players when looking towards the 2019 season. Yeah, absolutely. I think we had so much hype early on in the day, and this game with no world's implications didn't feel very exciting. But it's a very meaningful game for Fallen Bandit and Wiggly because it's a test of whether or not they can work on the LCS stage. It's a test for 2019. And I do find it interesting as well when we're saying, like, next year, Clutch still has regional qualifiers. That's, that, yeah, that's like, exactly what I was about to <laughs> say was, like, yeah, we can talk about CLG, the feel-good moments, the new guys coming in. But, like, for Clutch Gaming, you're Oof. still fighting for something. You just lost to CLG, who is basically trying these guys out and Biofrost building Leandries on Bard. This I want Bard only... mains to tell us why that's a thing. I don't. Yeah. So we tested it. It does not apply on your alt. That's you thing. literally have your autos and your Q. And you have two marksmen on your team. I don't think that's the I, build. Literally, I can't think of a single reason. But hopefully, hopefully, some bard mains out there will shed some light on it. But but again, I I want to return to the I want to return to the clutch point. <laughs> this was the most interesting. We point talked a lot about. I know, that. right? Like, <laughs> but let's yeah, let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the point you were making, which is clutch's postseason. And of course, it's not in their hands. They are relying on their champion points. You know, yeah. just landing them in the perfect position to get into the gauntlet. Uh, but what do they need to do as a squad, right, in order to even have an opportunity to win in the gauntlet? They just lost to the only team, aside from Golden Guardians, that was below them in the standings. It's tough, man. Like, that, a loss like that just doesn't look good. They got killed in the bot lane a bunch of times. There was a lot of pressure up there. Solo had a monster CS lead Solo in the top was very back. far ahead. Yeah. yeah, but that doesn't actually convert into anything. And like we said, all they did was, like, they did land some chain CCs whenever a member of CLG got too far ahead. But 
this is definitely a team that has that kind of a uh, hollow look in the eyes. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to think of Hakuho's champion pool uh, because he doesn't feel that effective when he's on Braum, Tom Kench, and that's very similar to the meta right now. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so they're either opting into a less meta pick, in a sense like Biofrost Bard was, right? It's something you're really comfortable on. It, like maybe they actually have to reach for Thresh. Yeah, right. I mean, like he's not huge in the meta right now. Yeah, but, but why not, right? They're losing bottom lane pretty badly almost every game. It's yeah. good I, I'm taking a look at their wins. Uh, uh, Morgana game, two Rakan games, Azira, yeah. and two Braum games. More uh, Morgana's good too, but that's usually banned against them. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's a tough spot to be in, but I think to your point, Jared, with the position you're in, you got to just try yeah. something different, right? You know, yeah. fall back on the comfort, fall back on what you know. Yeah, and it's not always as simple as champion select, right? We had their coach stepping down and resigning like three weeks ago. Extracts coaching both of his teams. They had a challenger or academy uh, yeah. playoffs this week they had to prep for and this. I will not give them good odds to make it to Worlds. I don't think anybody Old would at their this jet. point. But for CLG <laughs> and the promoted academy members, they pick up a very solid win today. As we wrap up the day, let's see how the teams are ranked. With their win today, Team Liquid locks first place Woo. in the regular split and earns a bye to the semifinals. So we will see them in Oakland. The remaining bye is up for grabs between 100 Thieves, Cloud9, and FlyQuest, all tied for second. And behind the top four, there's three teams still in the running for playoffs, but only two spots remain. So let's take a look at how today's results affected your predictions. Not bad. Ooh, look yeah. at that. I'm Jack very surprised by the, the COG win, for sure. And that, those numbers are still wrong. They haven't corrected for the time There's they no need accidentally to, Jack. did. I don't know what you're talking football. about. It wasn't on mm -hmm. air. Mm -hmm. I know I was only one game I'm going to keep the day. Keeping it under the rug. It's going to be I'm forever keep... contentious. We're going to check this. Plausible deniability. Uh -huh. Let's, Let's go. go. We'll go back. We'll review the VODs and we'll make We're sure. tied. <laughs> Can you prove it? <laughs> yes. If he says really? it enough times, right? No. Uh, either way, it's a very tight race, uh, especially if it does get evened up there, which means we rely on tomorrow's games. But were there any differences? Or was your guys' only well, difference in so, predictions the today's Optic TSM game? What's interesting is, as far as the fold sheets are concerned, we can still change our mind. Tomorrow's four playoff-impacting games are the same. Yep. COG versus Golden Guardians, however, could decide the race. So if we for continue, if we continue what we both said with our foldy sheets, there's only one game that we wouldn't differ on yeah. potentially, and that is that game. So okay. there's a chance we also just but pick the same thing we'll again. We might change the foldy losers. sheet predictions. You never know. <laughs> Anything can happen How here on the North you? American LCS. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what games we have in store tomorrow with our schedule presented by Jersey Mike's. Game one, Pits Optic against 100 Thieves, then FlyQuest and Cloud9 face off for a shot at second place in game four. But based on today's games, we're guaranteed at least one tiebreaker and a potential for four. And you, you're holding your hand up. What do you got for me? Because the first game of the day, 100 Thieves versus Optic, will decide if we can potentially even have more than two. All gotcha. the scenarios where there's more than two tiebreakers are only if Optic is able to win that game. That's, that's correct. So if you like tiebreakers, you're rooting for Optic. Exactly. If you want to see some games on Monday. That also means that if 100 Thieves wins, we're guaranteed to play the tiebreakers tomorrow because yeah. we will play up yeah. to two at the conclusion of the day. And, and if 100 Thieves beats Optic, we know the six teams going to playoffs. Woo! Oh, so it could all be decided very quickly. As far as like who's going. And right, right, right. Yeah, 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 seating and placing and all that yeah. to be determined. Well, if you need more league action, stay tuned for the EU LCS rebroadcast going live right after the show. And now for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for more of the NALCS. Good night. But we're stepping it up this split thanks to cutting edge advances in NALCS technology. We are now bringing you the Foldy Sheet in augmented reality. Two for zero, Liquid wants some more. They're gonna get a trade kill back though. The trade up fight is not gonna be enough. Liquid absolutely slaughter everyone as Dardock falls 4v4. Can they get the rest? This one is another kill falls. And Liquid are starting to clean up the fight. Dardock's next to fall into Mod. They has to run away. Liquid gonna secure the first place seed in the playoffs. And just like this that, this is a lot yeah. more manageable suddenly. We've have their yeah. possibilities. 5B, 400 Thieves in the chase, but a trade kill comes through thanks to Fizz. And a giant oh, no, no, no. remove. Is it going to be enough for Cody? So he's starting to clean up. We're coming in. I've got flash. He's tagged. I've got flash. I've got flash. I can eat. I can eat. I have hit. Oh, uh, we, can have end, we can end. We can end. We can end. Yeah, and, and, and. Seven straight wins. 4C9, the hottest team in the LCS. Hey, Mark, you want to uh, let everyone know how many scenarios remain? Uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> like 64. Yeah, I, I feel it right now. Like I feel, I feel all the hype and shit, but just have fun in the game, dude. It's yeah, going to be, be hella fun to play. We're going to go down. The great hub does wow. get a door club. Just if it operates, it's Birx and able to take him down. We can go, we can go, we can go. Nice hole. Nice hole. Leon. TSM.
keeping them playoff hopes alive. The pressure here, they can actually, oh wait. Good stun, pull up the arm. The Vivian bottom's really good. Oh, good. Biofrost. Golden Solo getting shot down. Wiggly able to take him out. But oh. Vivian's gonna die here as well. And CLG, they swoop into the clutch base. He really wants a match. He's gonna try to find a combo. Find the three-man charm in a knock. And that's gonna force Keen to flash away. The equalizer though turns it all the way back around for FlyQuest. Oh, Molo, he flashed the Teddy Karaka, but it's still found two carries. Contract's dead, Matt's dead as well. And FlyQuest gets the 10 magical wins.